Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Super Fantify. This being a show where we're talking about TV shows of supernatural fantasy and or science fictional genre. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Killjoys. Uh, a lot of stuff went down this episode, so let's break everything down. I do love that we get a little bit, not a lot, but kind of bit of that awkwardness of like, you know, uh, Davin and Delcea kind of playing the parent role. You have Delcea giving him... Um, their son, a name, Osman, uh, named after a grandfather, and the fact of the matter is just kind of teaching him royal stuff because it's like, oh yeah, you are a creshy, you are a creshy royalty, which is something like, oh yeah, you do have to technically think about that. Which I think I talked about that before, which is interesting because it's like, she's probably the first creshy to ever, like, naturally give birth in a very long time because they always use surrogate parents that was something we found out about wasn't it back in season one so it's just kind of interesting that she's done it probably it's such an archaic thing for them that you know it's probably i don't know it's just kind of interesting but um they even had that moment she's teaching him all the like etiquette and stuff like that and he hugs her at one point in time and she kind of hugs him back a little bit and she's like okay that's enough of that hugging is for poor people you know showing you know that's how poor people show their affection she lied and said she was going to crash because she was talking about whipping the nine back into place. So I guess it makes sense. I mean, to be fair, not all of them are alive because uh, Potter's sister killed quite a few of them last season. So it does beg the question, like, how many, I mean, uh, I mean, I guess not less there are replacements to replace those people that Potter sister killed last season or not. We do know at least some of them survived and everything. Uh, so I'm curious to see what that the state of the nine are, but it seemed like she wasn't going there. Maybe it, whatever she's doing, I'm assuming it must have something to do with Anila. The fact that she's not telling anybody, it's because she's probably trying to find her own way because she knows like everyone else is focused on trying to stop the lady. None of them are trying to focus on getting Anila out of the green. So that might end up being something that ends up counteracting what the group is up to because her getting Anila out of the green might be what ends up letting the um, lady out because like Anila is the last line of defense that's what I'm assuming but maybe she's got other plans of her own well they'll say you never quite know like I said she's kind of had that shift because even Davin is like yeah once enemies now we're on the same side we both want the same thing but it seems like she's got her own agenda what it is beyond that we don't know that's like the last time we saw her in this episode but obviously you have the whole angle of uh, Davin well, you know, trying to bond with his son a little bit. So it's like, you know, do you like, you know, stuff? And then Dutch willing to train him. There was an interesting thing that came up this episode was the fact is that Dutch started bleeding from her mouth at the same time Anila started bleeding from her mouth. Because they are connected after all. And I guess even under all these circumstances, well, it kind of makes sense because if Anila dies, so does Dutch. So maybe that was a reflection or maybe that was something on purpose. Because even like the ladies, you know, looking like Klein is like, what are you doing? So that might have been something she did on purpose. Maybe it was some way to kind of try and get a message to Dutch across the green. Maybe. I don't know. It could have just been simply like, could have been something she did to herself. Because it doesn't seem like what the lady does is physically mess with you. It seems more so like a mental. She gets all up in your brain and stuff like that. So for it to have a physical manifestation like that, seems like that's something Anila did herself. But we'll have to wait and see. So, but I think that's also what ends up motivating Dutch to push forward and push harder in training Osman uh, to take care of himself because it's like, because she knows what's coming. I even love that moment of Davin is like, yeah, make me look good in front of my son. She takes him down and humiliates him. And like, you know, Osman's like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing ever. And so, uh, you know, Dutch is trying to teach him everything she knows. This, uh, all the while, there's the whole thing with the lady that they're looking for. Turns out she is, in fact, an assassin, which is interesting. I guess, you know, because I thought it was kind of interesting because I thought the whole point would be like, oh, trying to track down the assassin she, she replaced in the memory. But it's like, no, she herself was the point. And it's like, okay, that makes a lot more sense. I was wondering if it was just like some random design or something. It's like, no, obviously it didn't come out of nowhere. That depiction had to come from somewhere. And so it's like... It turns out that the assassin that comes after them, this episode is connected to her. It's like we are a long line of protectors and stuff like that. You know, we haven't actually seen the Scarbacks this season. Are they all dead or something after Anila's attack last season? I'm wondering because quite a few of them ended up dying, didn't they? Um, when Anila went to um, Necropolis last season. I think that's what happened. I don't know if all of them are dead. Cause we haven't seen, well, there was the one that popped up earlier this season that helped them get into the Necropolis. Her, like, but other than that, we ain't seen many other Scarbacks. So I guess that was kind of like, that's kind of implying that all of the ones, you know, in the area, the ones that were there following Alvin, um, are all gone. So, 
I mean, the whole reason why I brought them up is because they have a connection to Anila and this whole Holin and Green situation. But I guess the protectors, whatever group this assassin was a part of, goes back even further. Because the thing is, I'm curious why he didn't answer the questions. Because it's like, if she knows about the lady, maybe he... Because the moment she brought up the lady, he shut down. He was like, this white dagger, you know, that parlay of sorts was over. So I'm guessing, like, anyone that brings up the lady, the lady is such a long-forgotten thing that if you bring it up, that must mean you're on her side. Which I guess kind of fits with the whole Pip situation. I'm like, oh, if you know about the lady, you must be controlled by her. Because it's interesting because it's like there's this whole war with the whole end going on and you didn't step in at any point in time, at least that we know of. So you kind of I guess it's because their concern isn't the whole end because the whole end are just babies. They're kind of a nuisance, an enemy that's on their own. That's kind of your own problem. Our problem is more so focused on the lady, I'm guessing is because it seemed like it's such a well kept secret. They are probably the ones who know everything there is to know about her, who she is, why and how she got trapped in the green in the first place. They might be connected to the people who actually did in the first place. So it's interesting because like I said, this is like they call it some divine mission so i feel like she must i mean they always made the comparisons you know the scarbats made the comparisons to anila being the devil but i guess like i guess the lady is the true devil incarnate like whatever her thing is because they talk about this being like their calls being hundreds of years old it was hundreds it started hundreds of years before dutch was born and it was just hundreds of years after she's gone so that's what we're assuming at this point in time beyond that we don't really know any Full details. I do like a lot of the time uh, Dutch and um, Osmond spend together. That like, moment they're hiding, it's like, okay, he's like, can we get lunch while we're here? And she's like, you are such, you are definitely a Jacoby asking for food right now. Um, and even a point where he ends up saving her when the assassin tries to attack her, and he's like, you know, uh, kicking his ass, saving your ass, you know, the whole ass, a whole lot of ass stuff, it was something line like that, and it's like a, an, an inappropriate thing to say, and it's like, yeah, that's something a Jacoby would say, so... But like I said, I also like the aspect is the fact is that Davin is trying to be all like very super protective because he's going into full on dad mode. He doesn't really bring it up this episode, but I'm assuming one major reason why he's trying to be a much better dad is because their dad was such a piece of shit. Like, so it's like I want to, you know, I think maybe on some subconscious level, Davin's trying to make up for the fact is that his dad, their dad was terrible. And Johnny kind of goes like, no, you were a good dad to me, except for all the times, you know. When you stabbed me, you left me, you turned me into a hole in. He's like, oh, too soon for all that? And he's like, yeah. So, yeah, there's that. But he, he has kind of looked after Johnny, so I guess that is the closest thing. But I think all that is just because he feels like I'm not ready. Because, for one, all of it was sprung on him a lot sooner than he... I mean, it was kind of an unplanned pregnancy situation, and it happened very fast. He grew up very fast in particular, so that kind of puts a wrench in the whole situation, too. But it's very sweet to see that side of him being overprotective. He's like, don't listen to Auntie Dutch. She's trying to teach you this and that. But it's like, hey, man, like, leave this to the adults type of thing. But then Dutch is like, come on. He's like my, you know, brother, nephew, whatever situation. Because it's like, yeah, you you know, because he had wondered about it, too. Because it's like, oh, we're family. Like, I, I, does that mean I don't have a family? And she's like, no, we're your family. Because Dutch can understand, too, because she has a weird background, much like him. Because it's like, oh, yeah, you're from, you're born from Anila and Davin, but your mom is also Delcea because she was impregnated with you. So you were kind of created, too. There's a whole thing behind it, which, you know, Dutch has got her situation being like a copy clone fake version of Anila, yet not fake. You know, there's that old complicated situation behind her backstory, so... But the really fascinating thing was the fact is that Dutch was about to do the torture thing to get information. And Osman walked in and he was about to walk away. But she was about to make him stay if Davin hadn't stepped in when he did. He's like, what the hell are you doing? For her, it's like, no, we had to get information out of the dude. I wasn't going to make Osman stand there and I wasn't going to make him see all the torture stuff. It's like, no, you were. You're lying. The fact of the matter is you're lying knows you kind of, the fact is you're lying right now means that you realize it is kind of messed up doing what you did. And he ends up talking about what uh, Klein did to her was abuse. And she's like, what? Don't say that. Which is so interesting because it's like, it's you getting so defensive about Klein. But I guess at the same time, because it's like now she has a new understanding for why Klein did everything he do. Like all of it was preparing her for all of this, preparing her for the fight against the lady. He knew what was coming. 
And I thought that was kind of neat. But, you know, Davin also knows what he's talking about. He comes from, like, an abusive family, so he knows. Especially after you consider everything that Dutch had to do, was put through, forced to do by Klein, all the little tests and stuff like that. So it's understandable, you know. But, da like I said, Dutch doesn't see it that way because she's like, it was all for a purpose. And she's like, the fact of the matter is your son is something special. He could be what we need. He could be the important item in this whole fight against a lady, which Davin's like, no. And she's like, we need to train him. I can make him into a great weapon. She herself was turned into a weapon. I think she doesn't see the messed upness behind it because for once again, it's because it serves a purpose. This is like a war and this is a great evil that needs to be toppled and he may be the only key to ending it all. Because for Dutch, it's like it's also because Dutch saw something she hasn't told anyone. That's also another aspect to this because she saw what uh, the lady put in her head of like everyone dying and Johnny being possessed by her and killing her finally you know so it's like for her it's like everything she cares about and everyone she loves it's not just like oh like she thinks about it it's like she saw it she felt it because the lady put it in her head and that's probably all she sees that's why she's so hell-bent on getting this done but for Davin, it's like what happened to you was messed up I'm not I don't want you to repeat that cycle and do it to my son because not only for his sake but also for your sake because you know you perpetuating this thing that was done to you will probably, in the end, he doesn't want that to kind of make her, I guess, feel light of what situation she was put through. Because once again, it's like she hated Klein for so long because of what he did to her. And now, like I said, just because she got more information on things, she kind of looked at it in a different light. So, What is interesting, though, is the fact is that uh, Osmond doesn't really look at the situation. Like, it's like, oh, hanging out with Dutch was fun and everything. But for him, it's like the moment it started getting down to that level, he, he kind of didn't enjoy it anymore. And Davin was like, the fact of the matter is you just kind of have to worry about it. you don't have to worry. Be caught up in all this grown up stuff like you focus on how you feeling like because he doesn't you know, it's like you're my son, you know, no matter what the situation is behind, like, what you can do and stuff like that, which I'll dive into in a little uh, in a sec. He's like, you're my son, and just know that f first and foremost. And because of that, which he also named, he's like, I want to be called Jacoby, and he wants to go by Jack for short, which is super sweet. So basically, he's keeping the same name that Anila had given him. I think it was like, wasn't it like, it was some specific last name that she gave him, but, you know, which is nice that, uh, Davin's kind of meeting in the middle. It's like, okay, you're Jack and that last name. And I thought that was kind of neat. And he's taking him off the ship because it's like, yeah, Dutch is so full blown about this whole situation. I can't stay on this ship right now because I got to look after my son. Got, he, his protection is what comes first. But, you know, no matter where you go, Davin, and this, I don't know, it's, it's definitely going to be interesting. Because I'm sure Johnny's not going to appreciate that either because it's like you just up and left without telling me because he knows that if he probably went to Johnny. Johnny will probably be on Dutch's side like about like talking this out and figuring this out. But for him, it's like Dutch went too far this time because it's like you you can't do, you know, I don't want you turning my son into an assassin. Like things are already complicated with him already with his whole situation. I don't want to complicate it even more because I think this is also coming from the perspective of Davin, who was a soldier too, so I think that kind of plays a role in his perspective on the situation. So I do love the conversation about the fact is Lucy, we gotta like talk to you about this whole situation because it's like every time someone leaves, she doesn't say anything. It's like, oh, Zeph left. Why didn't you say anything? She said not to. Oh, uh, yeah, I know exactly where um Osmond is. Why didn't you tell us he left? It's like that keeps happening over and over again. I love that aspect. Uh, speaking of Zeph. We end up finding out, like, you know, she took Pip because she's trying to figure out the whole situation. What she does, um, she's trying to get the spider out of his brain, which is like, oh, yeah, it makes sense that it would be in his brain. Because it kind of works basically like a Holland does, because Holland's kind of take root. The, the green takes root in your brain. But Sally's Pip situation isn't getting better. Like, I love that that line of him being like, I, if, if you have to kill it, kill it. But it's like... For him, it's like, I don't care because I want you guys, I betrayed you guys. I don't want you guys to ever feel like I might betray you, you again, especially you. Like, no matter where we stand, whether we become something more or not, I want you to trust me. And so, Zeph does it. She kind of zaps him more, but turns it, well, she makes it so she no longer, he no longer has to worry about it controlling him. But sadly, take killing it would mean killing Pip because they are so connected at this point in time. But the sad thing is, those spiders have a half-life, too. So, 
it's going it's dying anyway and the moment it dies pip dies too i guess like where it is in his brain it's like I guess when it enters your brain, like, I guess after everything she put him through, it killed him. And the only thing keeping him alive right now is that spider in his brain. But the moment it dies, he dies, you know, which is sad. Which, you know, Zeph is taking it hard for her. It's like, no, 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 I'll, I'll find a way. He's like, how long do I have? She's afraid to tell him because he probably doesn't have that much time for her to be like so focused on trying. No, 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 I'll save you. It doesn't matter how much time you got, love, I'll save you. Which is so sweet because it's like, oh, because like once again, it surprised you because it's like I thought it just be kind of like a, oh, man, potentially we, we're going to die type of situation. So it's like I, you know, we got together. But like I said, it grew into something more because it's the first person we've seen Zep kind of get very intimate with like that, you know, especially now it's like I'm sure it puts things in perspective, too, because it's like they ha also have such so short amount of time, you know, so then there is the whole situation about Jack. Um, I didn't really talk about it much, but like the whole, his whole power situation, it seems like he's got like some kind of like perception type of thing. Like he knows stuff, whether he hundred percent knows it or not. I guess it's a combination of like, like I said, whatever it is that's in Davin combined with what Anila had, like Anila was very specially in tuned with the green and maybe there's something in like, maybe those two things coming together manifested themselves as a, a completely different ability. Maybe it took properties of both and became this unique ability. Cause it almost seems like he's got like a sense of the world. Cause he knows things he shouldn't know. Cause he told Dutch when the duck and she's like, how did you know? He's like, I don't know. And he knew about the assassin trying to kill himself. He didn't get there in time, but it's like, he had feelings. So it's like, like I said, maybe it's some kind of like, there's like a psychic ability I am keep forgetting. It's like, you know stuff you shouldn't know. You have access, like, like I said, it seems like it's some kind of like perception type ability, like his surroundings and stuff like that. Like when there's kind of like a shift and kind of like the balance, maybe you can almost treat it like some force-like abilities from like Star Wars or something. But it seems like if there's a shift in the force of the universe or something like that, or at least within a certain radius, maybe he can kind of feel it and tap into it. I don't know. It is kind of interesting. Like, beyond that, we don't really know what else he's really capable of. He, I mean, he hasn't really had a time to really flex his muscles when it comes to his power. So, this is most likely just the beginning. There could be more. Because we obviously saw it last episode because he kind of sensed something was off with Pip. So, then there's also the pre and fancy thing, which I love that pre just getting all up in arms and stuff about it. Because it's like, yo, that's my man Garrett. We're going to find my husband. We ain't even going on a honeymoon yet. And they're threatening the guy who leaves the prints on the doors and stuff like that because he doesn't have any information. It's like, oh, you stink. What fancy is going to do to you is bad? Oh, wait till I get to you. And it's like, yo, you don't really get to see that side of free too much. But when it happens, you go, whoa. So I love the guy doesn't really give them information. And then pre, no, a fancy scans his hand. The dude sticking his hand's going to get, he's like, ah, 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 ah. And pre's like, you didn't have to make the dude think you were going to cut his hand off. It's like, well, he didn't have to shoot me, did he? So they laid a trap down and Pre is taken by uh, the Holland and he's taken to later on where we find out where everything's going down the rack. It's like, well, it makes sense. That's like the biggest base of operation because we still don't know where all the um, dolls who came snapped back into it full blown Holland again, where they all went last episode. I'm assuming it must be the rack then or somewhere else. I feel like they would have made note of that, but maybe that's just because they haven't taken the time to do that yet. But I'm curious to see where they ended up. Pre's on board trying to find Garrett and the kids. So what the Holland are up to exactly, we have no idea. So we'll have to wait and see in that regard. A lot of stuff is going down. Uh, I'm very curious to see where all this goes. Obviously, their clues connected to this group have you know, run dry because he has asked and killed himself. Granted, they still have the tattoo, so all they have to find is people like that, in particular, the lady in particular. And the question is, though, why her in particular? I mean, maybe she's just one of many clues because, obviously, the tattoo was another clue, and then there's the whole sound frequency thing that was kind of in the memory as well that Johnny and Lucy ended up, like, tracking down this episode. So I'm very interested to see where all that turns out as well as everything else that kind of broke down in this episode. We'll see where they all kind of take us next time. But really, that's all I want to talk about in this episode. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.